this lesson, we are going to show you how to set up the client portal. To do this, we have to go to the admin menu, which we can do by um, going to the hamburger menu in the top left corner and going to admin. As you can see, we have to go to the second page, extensions and integrations on the top and click on it. Right now, the client portal has become visible and we are going to expand this option. One of the first things we want to do when we set up the client portal is add our own logo for our own branding, which we can do by clicking on logos. Here on this page, you can choose or set up two logos, one for the login page and one for inside the application. And if you want to see how, the, how those pages look like, you can see it right here on the right side of the page. And as you can see, the logo goes above the login fields for the login page. And inside the application, it goes here on the top left corner. You might want to um, keep in mind that there are maximum image sizes. So you might want to keep those sizes right here in mind. And um, uh, after you've added the files, which you can do with this button right here, uh, you can click on upload and save and it will save the logos. If you want to clear the custom logos, you can click on this button right here, clear custom logo. And um, uh, after you've uploaded the right logos, we can go back to the previous page and get on with the further setup of the client portal. For the client portal, what we want to do is we want to go to global settings right here and click on it. And as you can see, this is the link to the client portal. It's just a generic link. So you can give it to all of your customers and they can log in with their own accounts. And we can set up different things like um, show tickets created on or after. We've left it blank because we want to show all the tickets. And um, as you can see here, we've set up that after three login failures, the account will be locked just for security purposes. Um, you can also set a stage status which, to which the ticket will be set after the customer added a note. We have added an, a custom status which is called customer note added. And uh, you can also set a task category for when an issue is created, which we've just left default. On this page, you can also choose or set a color to match your branding and you can check this checkbox right here to display invoice paid dates, dates on the client portal landing page, which we did because it's just uh, some extra information for our users. We also added our email or support email address right here to get notified when the customer adds a configuration item, which we've mapped to the notification template configuration item created. So after you've set the settings right here, you can click on save and go back to the previous page. In this page, what we also want to do is we want to add a news item. In this news item, as we click on it, we've put in a welcome message to our customers or to our uh, clients. As you can see, we've just set it to welcome to the new client portal and we've added some text here. In the text, we've also used HTML code to just give it a little bit more uh, color and uh, make it look a little bit better like this list right here. So you can preview it by clicking on this preview button. And with this checkbox right here, you can make it active. So it's actually displayed for your customers. After you're, you're done with this message, you can click on save and go back to the previous page. In this page, what we're going to do is we're also going to map a few priority questions. These priority questions are displayed to the user and they get asked two questions. One is how urgent is your request? And the second one is who's impacted. Um, depending on how they answer, which can be low, medium or high and only me, others and the whole company, we can set with what priority the ticket should get. So for so if a request is uh, is with 
has urgency low and is impacted only me, we've set the priority to low, which saves our technicians um, to, to do some manual thinking. After you've answered all these questions, you can just click on save and we can go back to the previous page. In the previous page, we can also manage the security levels for our customers, which we can do right here by clicking on manage security levels. As you can see, there are five system security levels, three for the client portal and two for Taskfire. If you're not sure which security level does what, we can just hover over the name and you get to see what is included in this security level. So for basic, the user can get, uh, can get to see all of their own tickets. And for advanced, the, the user also gets to see tickets of others. And what manager can do is they can also see invoices and financial reports. You might want to customize a few security levels to your own liking and to your own customers, which you can do by clicking on this new button right here and just answer all the questions and answer what you want them to see and don't see. We actually use the system security levels because they're pretty good set up and actually good for our customers. So after you, you're done, you can click on the back item and we get to go back to the menu. After we've set up the security levels, what we can do is we can also set up service request types. Service request types are actually um, f like forms in the client portal visible for the uh, end user. And the end user can answer, uh, for example, a few questions. Like if we click on this pencil right here uh, before hardware request, for example, um, a new page is displayed with the questions we ask our customer. So for hard re hardware request, we've, we actually ask the question, what other troubleshooting steps have you taken? And what is the error message or code that appears? And keep in mind, the customer can actually upload a screenshot to the ticket. So you can get a lot of information if you just ask the right questions. Um, one tip I want to give you is instead of um, making all these fields in the layout visible for the customer, to just keep it simple. As you can see, we've not even displayed the description. We've made it invisible and we've just put in a default value, see questions, so our technicians know they have to look to the answers of the, the questions we ask them. It's just to keep them very simple for our customers and they just get the questions we want to know the answers to. As you can see here on the bottom, we've enabled the priority questions, which means that the priority will be automatically set to the values we've just input on the previous pages when we mapped the priority questions. Okay, so when you're done uh, making all the different request types you want to, want to make, we can go back to the previous page, but as you can see, here are a few examples. Hardware request, new user, request for information, um, but also things like software request or sales quote request. So just make sure you want, want to use like a few different requests and put in a few different questions. So you can also always get the right answers to your questions and you don't have to call the user first. We can just uh, start troubleshooting the ticket right away. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the previous page. And one of the last things we have to do is we have to manage our clients. So when we click on manage clients, we actually see all of our clients here and we can manage them by clicking on the name of the clients. So what we uh, can do right now is we can manage the clients and as you can see we can put in a lot of different settings for this client. So what you might want to do is you might want to make only a few service request types available for a specific company. So instead of all request types we might want to use a custom uh, setting for this company and we might only want to make hardware requests available for the users of this company. 
What you also can do very easily is you can activate the client portal from right here. So when I click on activate client portal, a new screen will become visible. And from within the screen, we get the edit contact page, as you can see. So you can get to this page from a few different ways. We can search for the contact and edit it from right there. Or you can do it from this manage company page. Actually, you will get to the edit contact page and to the fourth tab, which is client portal. And on this page, we can click this checkbox right here to activate the client portal. And we can set, set a security level. If you can't exactly remember which security level is what, we can just hover over the security levels again, and they will show you what the user will be allowed to view and edit with each security level. Another thing you want, might want to do is just change the username for this company. As you can see, we've this is a test company, so we're not going to actually activate the client portal for this user, but you might want to uh, put in the email address for your user, or you might want to give them a unique username or another username other than their email. So when you've activated the client portal, if I click save and close right now, as you can see on the previous page right here, instead of activate client portal, it changed to the standard client portal user and which security level they have. So this user has the security level manager right now. What we can do is we can right click on it and we can go to either edit contact to edit the security levels or the username or stuff like that. Or we can go to preview client portal. If you click on preview client portal, as you can see, a new tab will open. And in this tab, you can you see exactly what the end user will also see. So if, if they ever have a problem with the client portal, you can just go to the uh, view client portal page like this, and you can click through it with the user or see what the user sees. You can help them through it. One thing you see here is the open tickets or the tickets the user has open right now. And another thing you see pretty prominently here is new ticket or the new ticket button. When you click on the new ticket button, like I will do right now, um, you get to see a, a new page or a new page will open and this page will display the new ticket. As you can see for this user, only the hardware request type is visible because we've changed that with, within the company settings. So when I click on hardware request and I click on continue, a new page will load and in this page, as you can see, it's a pretty simple page because I've just made the things visible that are important to this user. So we've asked a few questions and we also um, made visible for which contact this is and um, how urgent the request is. These are the priority questions, as you can see, low, medium or high and who's impacted. And based on these two questions, the priority of the ticket will be set. So as you can see, the user can save the ticket or they can save an attach a file if they want to. Um, right now, we're not going to actually put in a ticket, but it's good to have seen this page at least once. And as you can see in the client portal, um, the user gets a lot of options depending on their security level. So as you can see, they can view their tickets, they can view projects, they can see a few reports, and they can manage stuff like configuration items or add users. And if the knowledge base has external articles, you, they can also search the knowledge base. And there's also a lot of documentation they can search through. So that's the, uh, the client portal for the users. And as you can see, when we go back to the client portal, like right now, the setup page, we can also add a custom URL. The custom URL, you might want to set it to your website if you have stuff like uh, information on your website. Or you might want to set it to IT Glue if you um, uh, have a knowledge base in IT Glue or information in IT Glue. Or you might want to put in another, another link. You can just edit it right here. You can set if it should open in a new window or if it should use the current window. And you can set if, if the link should be active or inactive. 
when you're done and everything is okay, you can just click on save and close and it will become visible with, from within the client portal. If you want a little bit more information about the client portal, then you can click on client portal introduction right here. And as you can see, Autotask has a knowledge base and you can click on learn more to go to the knowledge base. So that was all to set up the client portal. 